Hello and welcome along to Gun Dog and Fly. And in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to catch loads of trout. So be sure to stay with me, it's coming right after this. Okay folks, thanks for joining me and um, I've recently just passed 6,000 subscribers and never ever thought that I would reach that many subscribers. I, I had no idea that that many people would be interested in what I do. So I want to thank you all, each and every one of you, for your subscription and um, I hope you continue to enjoy the channel. So, lots of you have been asking me to do a beginner's fly fishing course. And I've been thinking a bit about it and there are so many different aspects of fly fishing. There's so many different styles and so many different ways of fishing, different ways and different places like still waters, rivers, lakes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, different species and all that. My um, targets are wild brown trout. That's my, that's what I like to fish for. That's what I fish for all my life. So I was thinking about it and I thought to myself, if I wanted a beginner to catch a trout, and that, of course the best way to keep a beginner interested is to get them to catch a fish. I thought that if I had somebody who had a very, very basic knowledge of fly fishing, who had a rod and reel already, and they, um, they had the very basics of fly casting under their belt, so to speak, what would be the best style to introduce them to or to get them doing that would almost guarantee them catching a fish and develop their skill level as well. And I thought the upstream nymph, now, Upstream nymphin is in its most very basic, uh, it, it's a very simple way of fishing. As the name implies, you cast your nymph upstream, the fish takes it, you hook him, and that's it. That's it in very simplistic terms. Now, it is also quite skillful and requires a deal of effort to become proficient at it. But I thought if I had a beginner with me that's probably what I would try and get them doing that would almost certainly catch them a fish. So with that in mind um, I'm going to in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a bit about the upstream nymphing technique and then discuss the tackle and the various pieces of equipment that you need to be successful and to be able to fish the upstream nymph. And then I'm going to go uh, to the river and I'm going to demonstrate to you how I fish the upstream nymph. And um, that's basically the way it's going to run. This is going to be the very basics of upstream nymphing. There is a more advanced version, if you like. I'm filming this in the month of April where to a great degree the river is very forgiving, it's running relatively high and um, if you make mistakes the, the river will allow you those mistakes this time of the year. Further on into the year when the river drops down in the summertime you have to adjust the tactics because those mistakes won't be allowed. So there's a finer version if you like of upstream nymphing as well which I'll probably make a video on down the line, So, but this is, this is going to be the basic version. So, um, talk a little bit about the tackle that um, we use. I use this rod here for probably 90% of all my fly fishing. It's an old rod. I bought this rod more than 25 years ago. Um, it's a 9 foot three weight rod 
which was a very rare thing, believe me, 25 years ago. I struggled to find one, but I wanted a really light rod, and this is very, very light. I have then on this uh, rod, attached to this rod, I have a very, very light reel, so the whole thing's very light. Um, it's a great pleasure to use, and you can use it all day without tiring, basically. Um, it's a fast action rod, by the way, very fast tip action. And that's necessary, in my view, for fishing the upstream nymph because you need to be very fast to react to any takes. So that's the rod and reel. The line, well, I have a bit of a thing about fly lines. You can spend any kind of money on a fly line. I don't. I spend very little money on fly lines because I, I have discovered through experience, and this is my own personal experience, I only speak for myself here. Whether you spend 20 euro on a line or 20 dollars if you're in the US, or you spend 120, I think you're getting more or less the same thing. They all inevitably sink. Even the so-called best floating lines with special tapers and all the rest of it, they all inevitably sink. That's my experience, because I've tried a lot of them. Now, if, correct me if I'm wrong, um, if you found, if you found a, a floating line that continues to stay floating, well, I'd like to hear about it. So, this line here, like I said, probably cost me around 20, 25 euros. So, what are the very basics of upstream nymphing? Well, you cast your nymph upstream and the fish takes the nymph. How are you going to know that the fish is taking the nymph? This is, of course, and it was to me for a long time, one of the great mysteries. How was I going to find out, how was I going to know that the fish had taken the nymph? Now, I rely on the front of the fly line and a high-vis piece of nylon in front of it. I'll be doing a bit on that very shortly, but just to talk about it briefly. Indicators are used by some people for to detect takes. Now, indicators can be made of virtually any material. Um, they can be made of foam. There, there's a variety of materials that are made from. Generally, there, there's some sort of high-vis high material used as an aid in detecting takes. And in high water, you may get away with them, and you may be able to use them successfully. There's two reasons I don't use them. The first reason is that as the river starts to fine down a bit, and the water becomes clearer and uh, drop down to, say, summer conditions, in the rivers I fish, if you were to cast one of those indicators anywhere over the river, you'd scare every fish for 200 yards. That's the reality. So that's one of the reasons I don't use them. And the other, reasons I do, one of the other reason I don't recommend them is that you can become reliant on them to the point where, for instance, if you went to the river and you forgot them, you'd have to go home. You'd be that reliant on them. And the more subtle takes, the very subtle takes that I expand upon a little later on again, you will not detect those if you use indicators. You'll detect very obvious takes, but you will not detect the more subtle takes. So I don't recommend indicators in any circumstance. You'll become a better angler and a better nymph fisher if you don't use those type indicators. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I set up the fly line for the upstream nymph. And uh, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. This is the fly line. And as you can see, there's a little loop in the end of the fly line. Now you can buy fly lines that already have these loops built into them which is very handy, obviously. Well, what I do to create this loop is I strip off the covering of the fly line for about two inches, thereby exposing the core, which is braid, basically. And then I just fold it back on itself, wrap it with thread and a spot of super glue. Then if you want, you can put a little varnish over it or whatever, just to form that loop. 
Now that's a small loop and it doesn't add any more weight to the fly line than was already there. There are things called braided loops. I have one around here someplace. Um, yeah, I think I see one here. This is a braided loop. Do not use a braided loop. A braided loop soaks water like a sponge and will sink the front of your fly line, guaranteed. They are almost impossible to keep floating, so do not use one of those. They are used um, by a lot of anglers. Now, they're okay to use in still waters or stuff like that, but for when you want to keep your fly line floating high, avoid braided loops. Now, you'll notice on my fly line here, it's, uh, it's got some marks on it, and I just did that with um, a sharpie as it's known in the US or a marker as it's known here and um, basically I just touched the the fly line in a few different places a few inches apart and what that does is creates contrast now the next thing this here is very high vis as you can see it's very high vis line and I attach that to the fly line with just a simple knot. One second. Now, here we are. So now we have about approximately, I suppose, three feet of that high vis line. And then what I do is I attach, I join the high vis line, and this is a tapered leader. Now you can buy them in different lengths and different diameters. This particular tapered leader is um, it's a 12 foot 6x, and 6x approximates to roughly, I think around 3.5, 4 pounds breaking strain. And that's ideal for early in the year. Uh, when, like I say, we have relatively high water and you can fish one or two nymphs quite successfully with a 6x tapered leader. So what I'm going to do now is I'm joining the tapered leader to the high-vis um, piece of nylon using a water knot. And there are various knots for joining. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll find loads. So I'm just joining it, the two of them, just like that. And just trim off the ends. Now, that's it. Simple as that. Fly line, high vis nylon, about three feet of it, and then a 12 foot tapered leader, which you can buy in a shop, or you can make up your own tapered leader as well. You can build them through, uh, using different diameter di diameters of nylon. So that's that accomplished. Right, um, we have our rod, we have our reel, we have our line set up with our high vis piece of nylon and our tapered leader attached. Now, what's next? I hear you ask. Well, all of this is useless, of course, without the the um, the nymphs. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the type of nymphs that I typically use uh, in a day's fishing. Okay, some of the nymphs that I would be using, um, they come in many guises. Um, this is a box of nymphs that I've tied up for somebody and uh, they're kind of typical of what I might be using this time of the year. Month of April into May, there you'll see they're all bead-headed nymphs. Like everyone else in the world, I'm now using bead-headed nymphs most of the time because they are super effective. Um, most of these in here are, as I say, they're sized uh, 14s and 16s. 
and um, they're the most useful size I find around this time of the year. Um, for example here uh, we have gold heads, uh, the bodies on those are a mixture of seals for and hairs for these here silver beads, silver headed hairs ears, they have pheasant tails here in gold heads, uh, different coloured um, colours on them, in this case orange and in this case chartreuse. And behind them then I have perdigons which are universally popular now, developed by the French National Fly Fishing Team I believe, and uh, they're super effective also. And um, have a few bigger ones just here, uh, size 12s, <coughs> it's rare that I would fish size 12s, they're very big, uh, there are occasions when I would but uh, it makes for difficult casting on a very light rod like the one I showed you there a short time ago. So mainly 14s and 16s this time of the year and as we move on into the summer we reduce the size. So that's the, uh, they're the typical nymphs that I would, would use in a day's fishing. Okay folks we now have the bare essentials covered, we have our rod, a reel, we have our fly line set up, we have um, our little bit of high-vis nylon attached and then we have our tapered leader then attached to that. So what else do we need? Um, to fish the upstream nymph properly it's essential to have waders. Waders give you more access to more parts of the river, obviously. And the chest high variety are the ones to have. It's not that you need to be wading chest deep at all, but there are many, many advantages to having chest waders. So they are an absolute essential. Another thing, eye protection. Very important to have eye protection. Whenever I'm fishing, I wear glasses all the time. So I need glasses to see properly anyway. So I'm wearing glasses all the time. These nymphs are made using tungsten beads and they're very heavy. And they're obviously they're attached to a hook. So if you make a clumsy cast, or for instance, if the wind catches the line as you lift it, and one of these flies goes in your eye, well then you're going to have a very, very serious issue very quickly. And there's a possibility you could lose um, your eyesight in that eye and uh, nobody wants that to happen so eye protection. If you wear glasses already well then you've already got it but a lot of anglers wear polarized glasses and um, not only do they protect their eyes from hazards like that but they tell me that they look really cool in them as well. Now uh, what else? Oh yes a peaked cap, very important. Your eyesight, you're depending on your eyesight to detect takes when the fish takes the fly. If you have the sun in your eyes you're going to be squinting and that will reduce the effectiveness of your eyesight. So a peak cap will protect, will protect you from the sun if it's high up or as, if it's at an angle to you. And talk a little bit about the detecting of the takes. When I first started um, upstream nymphing, which isn't today nor yesterday, it's a long long time ago. I reckon for the first few seasons I was detecting m maybe around 50% of the takes and they would have been the obvious takes. I was missing out on the subtle takes because my concentration was split between watching for the takes and my line control and retrieving the line and handling the rod. So therefore my concentration was split between the two things. As the time went on, the line control and the rod control became more automatic, much like driving a car. So then more of my concentration was on the end of the fly line and the high vis part of the line. And I began to detect more takes and catch more fish. So it's a skill like any other, it takes time to develop you develop the memory, the muscle memory in your hands for to handle the line and the rod and eventually your your skill level will improve and you will begin to catch more fish. Some takes are very obvious and some are very 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 subtle and then you have everywhere in between. 
It's when you reach the point where you can detect the really, really subtle takes that you know that you're making progress with the upstream nymph. There are times when, like I say, it's very obvious the, li the, li the fly line will suddenly just stop and you'll react instinctively and you'll have your fish on. And that's great and that's, it really inspires confidence in beginners. So this, that's the reason why I think this is a great way to introduce someone to fly fishing because they'll almost, they'll catch a fish, well, give or take, reasonably quickly after starting. Um, some of the takes are very, very, very subtle indeed. And like I say, it'll take time to develop the skill to be able to detect those takes. So they're, roughly speaking, the requirements for to start out upstream nymphing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head to the river. And when I reach the bank of the river, there are a few other little necessities that I'll show you that are required. And then we'll do a little bit of fishing and uh, we'll see how things go. So be sure to stay with me. Okay folks, hello again, um, I'm here at the river as you can see, and uh, I've set the rod up, got my waders on, got my eye protection, got my peak cap, so everything's ready to rock. I got my little size 14 nymph tied on, and now what I'm going to do is probably the most important part of all. This is vital to fish the upstream nymph to its maximum advantage. The front part of the fly line here, the high vis and the front part of the fly line, I'm going to grease it. Now there's a variety of different makes of grease that you can buy. This is called payet paste. Um, Mucilin, this uh, here is a fly floatant, but it'll also do the job, gink. Um, anything that will float, any form of grease that will float this high-vis part and the front of the fly line. It's vital that this floats high. What I mean by high is that it's actually on the surface and not in the surface, or worse again, under the surface. Two reasons. If it's on the surface, high on the surface, it's much easier to see. Also, if it's on the surface, you'll have a direct connection when you strike. If it's in the surface film, or worse again, under the water, it'll delay your strike and you'll most likely miss the fish. So it's vital that you grease the line. And you may have to stop periodically to do it throughout the day fishing. So that's it, everything's ready to go. And now I just want to talk a little bit. Now I'm avoiding getting the grease on the, the, this leader. I applied the grease with my right hand, so what I'm doing is I'm handling the leader very carefully and mostly with my left hand so that I don't get any grease on the leader. I want that to float, or sorry, to sink, should I say. So now, for a beginner, it must be um, sort of intimidating or maybe even a little bit overwhelming arriving at the river and figuring out where will I fish, where are the fish most likely to be at. And the best thing, I was given advice by a, an old man many years ago who said to me, he said, stick to the broken water. What he meant by that is water like this, that's running over obstacles, that it's not flat on the top, in other words, that it's running over obstacles like rocks, sunken trees, and all kinds of other stuff. That's the environment in which the trout's food lives. The majority of aquatic insects live in an area like this, with choppy water, plenty of stones they can hide around, and the trout know this. So when trout are on the feed, they migrate to these areas specifically to hunt for those insects. So that's the best place to, um, to start fishing, basically. So I'm going to do a little bit of fishing here. I don't hold out much hope, uh, to be honest about it. Conditions are not exactly um, conducive to good fishing. I've got a downstream wind, northeasterly, never good for fishing. And also um, we've got bright sunshine from time to time, so neither of those are very good for um, any type of fishing, but we'll give it a go anyway, and uh, hopefully we'll get a fish or maybe two.
this is a likely looking spot here. Um, just a lovely run. There should be fish in it, I've no doubt there's fish in it, but whether or not they're feeding is another thing. So the idea is, if you can imagine a line directly in front of me, a line at that right angle and a line at that right angle. That's where I'm fishing from. So I'm gonna fish a cast there, a cast there, a cast there, there and there. Sort of work it like a fan, if you know what I mean. You're covering as much water as possible. And we peel our eyes to the high-vis section of the line and anything that happens visually we're going to respond to it but there's sometimes you just get a feel there's a feeling you get and you lift and there happens to be a fish there so let's give it a go first catch of the day a stick fish this is inevitable when you're fishing subsurface flies it's inevitable that you will catch up on sticks stones and all the rest of it and you will strike a lot of times and it won't be a fish it'll be a stick or a stone but uh, you have to respond to everything and don't try to second guess it No fish, as yet anyway. Right folks, let me introduce you to my buddy Michael. Michael, give the, give the uh, subscribers a, give them a wave here. Um, Michael is just greasing up his high-vis section and the front of his fly line here getting ready to fish the upstream nymph through this beautiful run of water here. So we're going to watch Michael for a while, see how he gets on. quite windy so it's difficult enough to manage the line but There you go, fish. Oh, nice fish, Michael. Beautiful. He's going to put up a bit of a battle, I suspect. He's getting downstream. Great fish, Michael, I think. Oh, he's putting in the run. That's a really nice fish. Beautiful, Michael. Upstream nymph strikes again.
What a beautiful fish. Gorgeous. Lovely fish. Beautiful wild brown. Back he goes. Fight another day. Well done, Michael. <laughs> Quick release, yeah. It's got very windy now, so. Difficult to control the line. But Michael is doing well, he's got another fish. Yay! Excellent. Beautiful wild brown. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. If you were looking for a place where a trout lives, have a look at that. It's a really obvious place for a trout to be. It's got all the attributes. Nice, fast, oxygenated water, plenty of rocks, places where insects are going to be living. So hopefully we get a fish here. fish. Just check my hook. Everything appears okay. And right here we have a fly angler's nightmare. Lovely run of water with a low hanging tree. So I'm going to give it a go. It's windy as well. Into the bargain. Make it even worse. So um, I'm going to see if I can get my nymph in there and swim it down under that area there. Most likely I'll get caught up in the tree or something will happen like that. So. 
Go and give it a go on it. Now the light has changed, so it's much more difficult to see the line. You'll notice this when you're fishing the upstream nymph that the light very much affects um, the visibility of the high vis section of your line and the fly line. I've got a fish. Beautiful wild brown. We hold on. Gorgeous fish. Wise thing to do when you're when you're releasing your fish is to release them downstream in the way that they won't swim up and scare any other fish that might possibly be in front of you. So remember that very important because he's panicked and panic is contagious in trout. changing again and making it easier to see the high vis section. We're searching every possible place. Gorgeous fish. So as you can see, the upstream nymph does work. So 
Well, that's it, folks. That's upstream nymphing in a nutshell. Um, very simple. All you have to do is practice, and you'll get inevitably get better at it. Um, this little nine foot three weight, you don't necessarily need that super light reel. You don't need any of those. The rod and reel that you currently have will do the job fine. So get out there and get on the river. And give it a go. And um, be sure to subscribe because later on in the summer, I'm going to be doing a more advanced version of this um, very basic upstream nymphing, where things are much, much different. Very low water, so the tactics, you have to change the tactics for that. So. Once again, thanks very much for joining me and um, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it and be sure to share it with your friends and Kodi Kakasper Erachele Arishmuit Idrangalin Bigi Slawan Agus Bigi Egi Skrat